I guess to heat your toes up whenever it's winter time, we don't have AC, but. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are finally gonna start working on our Robinson R22 helicopter. And one of our main goals of today is start digging into this thing, start tearing stuff apart and just getting it ready for a complete overhaul. And some of you guys may not understand what an overhaul is for an aircraft. It's basically redoing the whole entire thing and making it brand new again, which in this case, we're gonna have 2,200 hours of flight time, which I believe every Robinson times out at, which is super awesome. It's gonna give us the ability to actually get our private pilot license when we're done with this. But anyways, the reason why you gotta completely tear this thing apart, because most of this stuff actually gets sent out to either get rebuilt or tested. For example, our engine is gonna go back to the factory to get completely rebuilt, as well as our landing gear. I believe it has to get tested, strength tested, and all that good stuff as well as this rear frame and the interior and all that good stuff. I mean, this thing is just gonna get down to its bare bones. And of course, at the end of all of this, we're gonna do our own Goon Squad personal touch on the paint and the interior, which is gonna be super exciting. But anyways, before we start tearing this thing apart, as we mentioned, you wanna be super organized with this whole entire process. So what we're gonna do is actually try to build some shelves along this back wall. That way we can stack everything, just keep everything consistent and organized. So the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead, run to a local hardware store and see if we can come up with some shelves. Alrighty guys, so we are finally back from the stores. We went to Lowe's and Home Depot and we ended up finding some better deals at Home Depot. And this is what we picked up. We got four organizers here. This is gonna be for our bolts and nuts and all that good stuff. And also we got the biggest shelves we could possibly find. Hopefully this is gonna be enough for all of our parts. If not, we'll probably run back and get some more. But anyways, let's just go ahead and crack this stuff open and get it all set up. All right, so we finally got our shelves completely set up and I think they're in the perfect spot. And also these suckers are pretty heavy duty. So if we do gotta set something heavy up there, that's gonna be possible. And as far as our cubbies go, I believe we got plenty of them here. And also we got our Sharpies right here. That way we can mark and label and just keep track of everything. But that's just pretty much it for all of our storage. The next thing that we're gonna do is actually get in contact with Tommy. And Tommy is an A&P, which is an airframe and power plant mechanic as well as a Robinson component specialist, which is awesome because without him, this project just would not be possible. So he's gonna be our guidance and inspector throughout this whole entire ordeal. So let's just go ahead quickly get in contact with him and then we're gonna get straight to work.
Alrighty guys, we already started digging into this thing and we are starting with the interior first because our main goal is to actually get to the fuel cells and this is what you gotta start with, man. And check this out, we already took these two back panelings off and it opened up a bunch of wires, the fuel lines, and dude, check out these collective rods that go up to the Ooh, top, dude. That is neat that right is there. That is sick. And one thing that we just found out is this thing actually has storage and the seats just pop up, which is awesome, dude. You can literally just throw a backpack in there and head to the beach or something. Dude, you can fly to the beach for the weekend, dude. That is legit. And it says there's a 50 pounds max on each side. And that's actually pretty big. You can actually put like two full backpacks in dude, there. Dude, that'd be epic. I wonder how far you can go on one full tank of fuel. I don't know, fuel. dude. Maybe you can go pretty dang far. But anyways, there's uh, airports Airport. along the way. So you can probably just go as far as you want, honestly. Go go cross country to a couple scenic views or dude, something. You can honestly do that. That would be epic, How insane dude. would that be? That's, that's awesome. But so far, what we removed, the doors, the seat belts, as well as the backing over the seats right here. And next thing is going to be that liner right there, oh, right? Oh, yeah. We're going off a maintenance manual right now. And uh, it's actually pretty dang simple. All this stuff was on Phillips screws. So everything just came off super easy. So right now, we're going to actually go ahead and rip this headliner off and go from there. Alright guys, so we went ahead and removed all the headliners in here and scraped that sucker completely off. And also we jumped onto the exterior and removed this outer paneling that covers the engine side. As you can tell, we even found a little fan right here, which is pretty dang crazy. A little turbo. turbo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as for this side, let's go ahead and move right along over here. We removed all the paneling as well. And as you can tell, this auxiliary tank, which is probably the reserve, this sucker is a lot smaller than that side over there, which that is the main tank. It like sits all the way back to here. So this sucker should be super easy to pull off. That one on that side should be a little bit more difficult. So let's actually hop back over here. It's a little bit weird. It's got like a panel on the bottom and yeah. then like there's a bunch of lines going yeah, through as well. Yeah, there's two bolts right here and there's also a few bolts going up top over here. So we're probably gonna have to remove this paneling as well as this paneling and I believe a few more lines on the inside where, we're, where we removed the headliner. But before we do that, we actually looked inside of this thing. There's actually some fuel left over, so we're gonna have to drain it and 
by the ma manual, we actually found out that this sucker right here is the fuel drain, which exactly. is crazy. And all you gotta do is just push it in right there and you get some jet fuel Dang, just coming man. on. There's not really much in there because the low low well, fuel light was on. Yep, so there should be probably, there's probably like a little bit. So hopefully that's enough to actually catch it Dude. all. And uh, we did notice that some of these panelings on this helicopter is actually made out of Kevlar, if I'm not mistaken. A dude. lot of them actually, like yeah, this like... whole section right here, this aluminum, and then this whole entire piece right here, if you could tell, if I zoom in, that's all Kevlar. Kevlar. Look at this little fan, zoom in on that. That sucker is all made out of Kevlar, dude. I'm guessing this stuff is super strong, but super, super light. light. What weight reduction right oh, there, yeah. man. But that is pretty cool right there. This is just amazing just seeing all this stuff. Just like, look at that. Everything is just super awesome. Like, I love opening this panel up, just looking how, dude, this engine's so much different from your normal engines. This is awesome learning all this exactly. stuff. Exactly. But we really want to get those fuel tanks out. So I guess let's just keep moving. Remove. Yeah, well, I guess we're going to go ahead first, drain all this fluid, and then help up top and start removing this paneling. All right, so a little change of plans. I think we actually found a better method to get that fuel out of there. A lot faster method. A lot faster. That's right under the fuel filter, and I think that's the correct way to do it. Up top here, I believe, is where they just get like fuel samples or whatnot, because you don't want to like stall with some bad fuel in the air. That oh, is yeah, super definitely. sketchy. But anyways, the cool thing about these tanks is actually they're gravity fed, dude. Yeah, and this thing is carbureted, so it Car makes sense, you know what I mean? Carbureted and gravity fed. There's no fuel pumps on here because they sit high and the engine sits low, so that's pretty cool right there but i believe we're actually going to get rid of just the aluminum tanks and install some bladder tanks yeah bladder tanks i believe that's just the best way to do it you know that's I mean? a new thing you know that's the way to upgrade your fuel tanks right. i believe it's safer i wonder if we can put bigger tanks in here to go further distances hmm. you know what i mean that's something that we're definitely gonna have to look into but i guess as of right now let's get all this fuel out of here and try to get these tanks off let's do it cool look how it's designed like the whole entire frame piece goes all the way to the end that was and it's all on rivets which is crazy because this is i think it's i believe it's aluminum oh yeah definitely well, i aluminum. wonder why they didn't weld it they just made it all on rivets because you know welding it would have been a lot better maybe this is lighter who knows i think so i think that's probably the better method i'm robinson has been around for years they know so what they're doing they man. know what they're doing but that is pretty cool the auxiliary tank is out and as far as the bladder tanks go, I believe it's, I don't even know how that's gonna work. I don't even know how, what it, I wonder if we're getting new tanks or the bladder like goes inside that tank. Who knows, man? We're just gonna have to figure that out later yeah, on. Yeah, but let's go over here, look dude. Look how crazy that looks, dude. Oh my goodness. This is where it gets real exciting right here when you start tearing stuff like getting, this is a transmission dude, right that's here. That's the transmission. And man, that was just one fuel tank and look how much it opened up. You know, there's really not, like much. if you really think about it, there's really not that much to this thing you know what i mean that is so true right a there. lot Look of people that. are like uh, you know they're like man dude that's gonna be crazy but when you really start looking at it there's really not that much to it you know dude, what i mean that is just epic that is true it's not super complex just like the interior it's not too, yeah, super, not complex. too super complex that's the transmission tube right there right yeah i believe so that's the transmission right here one uh shaft goes to the rear tail rotor and one shaft goes to the main rotors which is crazy but we're definitely gonna have to remove that as well i can't wait to get to that part but as of right now what do you want to go ahead and see if we can remove the main yeah, tank yeah the main tank uh like you said it should be a little bit more difficult but you know what 
Hey, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Let's go ahead and I guess uh, figure this one out and unconnect all the hoses or whatever. Let's and see if we can take it off. Let's do it. Alright guys, so it is actually the next day. As you can tell, we finally removed both of the fuel tanks over here and dude, it opened up this whole entire area around the transmission and gearbox. And dude, check that out, dude. This thing is starting to look crazy. Dude, the coolest thing that I noticed is this right here. This is actually an e-brake. It's like a brake of some sort and it actually has pads on it. So it basically just stops this rod right here from spinning. I and guess there's a, there's a wire that goes on the inside, right? Yep, it goes on the inside and you just pull it. I guess whenever you come into a landing and you want to just stop the blades whenever you turn it off, probably you want to land stop super it. fast. <laughs> if you're in the air and you press that, you're no, you we definitely got to figure out what that use is for, but that's pretty neat right here. Look at this whole entire frame. Look how look how it's designed. You I know? know, right? And this is ain't this the clutch right here? Yep, that's the clutch assembly, I believe, which that's gonna come out, and all this is gonna come out. The gearbox is gonna come out. That'll be the next yeah, major thing. Yeah, this is thing the transmission made. slash gearbox, which is pretty dang pretty dang crazy looking. It is pretty small, but you know that's all you need. It's one gear basically, and that's it. You know exactly. what? Exactly. Hop in there and actually hit some of these controls. I want to see how this stuff works. Yeah. I'm top over here and you can tell this is if you want to fly forward backwards and side to side that thing is insane and then i believe um this right here Ooh, is to go uh, that's the collective right there that's the throttle and it just lifts up do that yeah, again that's the throttle and this is like to go up you know oh, to fly up that's to go mean? up the yeah. throttle is actually the on twisty the thing yeah, on the collective which is pretty dang crazy but other than that dude this is probably going to be the next biggest thing that we're going to be removing which probably will be in the next video yeah exactly and also some cool things about this transmission is look at that look at that little temperature gauge thing right there what is that is i it, think it's just a sticker that you just go off of i guess it changes colors or something like that which ooh, is pretty dang cool but look at the fluid in there yeah. that stuff is black but i really don't know what this fluid looks like maybe brand new looks black who knows that is awesome got some bushings right there and Let's, i believe don't we have to like uh build like some kind of bracket to put this gearbox on or exactly like yeah we got to build a special stand for it or something like that i guess that's how we're going to ship it or whatever so yeah definitely we're gonna i can't wait to get to that but as far as our storage and how we're just stacking everything hey, it looks like we're gonna be able to have the perfect amount of room i mean we're making sure to stack everything real nicely as you can tell we're just labeling and we decide to just like glue or i mean tape. just tape the baggies to the parts itself that way it'll be just a lot easier whenever you're putting it on you know what I yeah mean? exactly yeah everything is just gonna go right back into its spot like that just tape it on there i think that's just the best way to do it right and, there uh, I mean, we still got a good bit to go, but it looks like we will probably have enough room for everything. We got a whole section right there, got a whole section right here, and we could just kind of just compact a few things. I mean, the engine is not going on here because no. that's going to go straight into a crate and shipped off as well as the transmission and all that Ooh, stuff. dude, you know I, I can't wait to take out that engine as well. Look at that. We're going to ship these suckers off because if you think this thing just uh, splits in two or something like that? It may or? unbolt completely. So you got bolts there, and then I think this angle right here probably unbolts, and you just kind of just disassemble assemble everything but oh yeah that is so cool right there the next thing that we're gonna do is what jump gonna, back inside yeah, we're gonna jump back on the inside over here go ahead and remove the bottoms of these seats right here go ahead and put them on the shelf as well as rip out all the carpet and maybe even start removing some of the avionics
All right, so we went ahead and ripped out the rest of this carpet, and to do so, we had to remove the seat bottoms, a few electrical panels, and this little paneling that's in the middle, which exposed all those connecting rods, and check that out, man, that is pretty neat. And there's also some sort of like bungee cord type thing right there, just to keep resistance on this thing, which is pretty cool. And also, whenever we remove this little paneling in this storage compartment, we found out that there's actually a tube that runs all the way up to the foot pedals, and it's actually a heater, which is pretty dang cool. I guess to heat your toes up whenever it's winter time we don't have AC but we do have a heater and and the way it actually runs off of is actually the muffler in the back so that fan on the side is actually the heater fan which blows air which sucks air in and blows it inside the exhaust and blows the exhaust air out into your toes which is pretty dang awesome <laughs> yeah i don't think it actually gets the exhaust air so you're not going to smell exhaust yeah. but it just runs through it, it warms the air up somehow yeah definitely like that. which is which is actually pretty neat you know they don't have to put like a heater core in here or anything like yeah. that they just use that the exhaust heat that's definitely going to be a winter time thing right there as for summertime, the summertime you just I think take you the take doors, the doors off. off yeah exactly <laughs> and we did some research on that e-brake thing and that's just to i guess lock in the main rotor blade yeah, whenever you're, you park this thing and it's windy outside, you, you don't really want the main rotor blade spinning. You just pull this sucker down and lock it in. And they, I, th I believe you have to lock them in straight like that, right? Yeah, front to back, that's just the best way. You don't want it to get in the way of anything else. But that is pretty much it. We can't really do anything else in the interior. Because yeah, the next thing in the interior, we're probably going to remove all these gauges and stuff. But we're going to do a little bit more research, look at the maintenance guide and all that good stuff. But dude, that is pretty much it for this thing. But with that being said, that is going to be a wrap for today's video. We are just straight up ripping into this helicopter and we are enjoying every bit of it. But there is still much more to go. So make sure your guys' post notifications are on so you don't miss out on anything. And also, if you guys want an inside scoop before YouTube, definitely give us a follow on Instagram at Goon Squad. And I do want to mention that we just restocked on our brand new t-shirts, this time in a new color. You got the Goon Squad badge on the front pocket, as well as the dang sun on the back. These suckers just fly off the shelf. So if you guys want to help support your boys, definitely be sure to visit GoonSquad.com and cop you one. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Be sure to drop your comments and thoughts down below, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.